This is the front line of war medicine. The ambulance is packed. Four battlefield casualties, all part of an infantry unit struck by Russian artillery while fighting in the counteroffensive. Eight miles from the killing fields of southern Ukraine, this is the front line of war medicine, a village clinic now the first stop for wounded warriors. We were given rare access to this critical stop between rudimentary battlefield first aid and high-tech trauma hospitals. The Ukrainians call this a stabilization point. Each patient gets a number, a room, a team. The head doctor rushes between them and assigns surgeons like Vasily Raminshitz to treat the most critical cases. When people arrive here in an ambulance, what's your goal? How quickly do you want to get them out of here and on their way to a hospital? 15, 20 minutes. We must do all quick and then receive him to the hospital. You can do surgery in 20 minutes? Yes, yes, emergency surgery, yes. And an amputation? An amputation like 30 minutes. How often do you have to do that? It's different. One day we have six amputation in a row, like one by one. This is Ramin Sheet's surgical suite. There's no running water here. The most advanced imaging equipment is this ultrasound kit donated by a charity abroad. Nonetheless, Ukraine believes its stabilization point strategy may explain why. On their side, according to a leaked U.S. intelligence assessment, only one in seven battlefield injuries leads to death. For the Russians, it's one in five. If they come to, to us alive, they stay alive. And it's a big if because they're traveling sometimes more than an hour to get here. Yes, yes. Sometimes a combat medic can't put this uh, patients to the car because it's a lot of missile attack, archery attack. A new ambulance full of casualties can arrive at any time, typically with just 15 minutes notice. Many of Ukraine's most risky counteroffensive operations happen at night. The doctors, nurses and staff here at the stabilization point don't just work here, they live here, many of them for weeks if not months on end. They sleep on thin mattresses on the floor. At stabilization points, everyone is always on call. Yeah. Ramin Sheets, who's 29, worked as a pediatric surgeon in Kyiv before Russia's full-scale invasion. Is this a normal day? Yeah, it's a normal day and it is like easy day. Today's an easy day? Yeah, yeah. In a hard day, we have 50 or maybe 100 patients per day. From that group of four who arrived together in one ambulance, a concussion, a broken leg, two shrapnel injuries, one hit in his neck, another, a 30-year-old named Vladimir, hit in his thigh. He says they're all part of an infantry assault team. We just arrived and got out of the vehicle as the incomings hit us, he says. Just 30 minutes after they arrived, Vladimir and his comrades are loaded into another ambulance for the hour-long drive over battle-scarred roads to the Zaporizhia Trauma Hospital. There's very little break before the next ambulance. The capacity here recently increased to 300 patients per day. Do you feel that the team here is prepared for the counteroffensive? Yes, we are prepared for this from a long term, you know, like for two months. We are prepared for the big wave of patients. If the front line moves south from here, will you be moving with it? Yes, of course, of course. We need to be like 15 or 30 minutes from the front line. How do you do that? How do you move all of this quickly? Oh, a lot of cars, a lot of work, but we make it. Despite all the preparation for the main thrust of the counteroffensive, Romanchitz remains nervous about how brutal and bloody it will most certainly be. People in our country, they say, let's go, but it's very hard, serious, scary, big blood. And you think that's coming soon? Yes. We think that. They will follow the front line and continue providing cover to Ukrainian fighters fighting for their lives. Jason Bellini, Scripps News in the Zaporizhia region of Ukraine.